During my observation hours for this class, I observed both athletic training and physical therapy um, because I have always been interested in both and I didn't really know which one I wanted to land on until I um, joined this program here and then had many different meetings with different faculty members and realized that I could do both. Um, Dr. Barry and I have talked and we've decided that I'm going to do a dual program of both physical therapy and athletic training. So I decided to do both of my um, observation hours on those just because I felt that that made the most sense for me um, based on what I want to do with my career. Um, so the first place that I did my observation hours at was at Clintondale High School in um, Clinton Township, Michigan. I did that for athletic training. Um, and I was under the supervision of the athletic director, Bob Wamsley, um, and then a subcontracted athletic trainer that was there for the night named Mary. Um, and then, of course, his phone number will be listed below in the comments with all that other information. And then for my second observation um, experience, I did it here in Saginaw at level, lesson, at level 11 physical therapy. And I was under the supervision of Michelle um, and she also had an internship student named Tyler from CMU. So while she was dealing with one patient, he would deal with another and I would go back and forth um, to kind of watch both and experience. More and I um, d discussed and talked with him about his experience in physical therapy. Um, and I felt like that was such a good learning opportunity because I learned more from somebody closer to my age that is going through the same things that I will be going through soon. Um, so some basic tasks that I observed while athletic training at the football game. Um, I observed just wrapping up wrists and ankles before the game started for previous injuries or strains um, that might that the athletes might have had. And then I also observed just setting up the station on the field. So that included the tent um, because it was a little windy that day and it might have been um, raining. So we got a tent prepared and then a bench that the players could sit on so if they injured their ankle it was easier to get to um and just to kind of help them have something to lean on um fill up ice buckets pre-wrap some ice um pre-bag some ice put it in the ice bucket um and just setting up all of the equipment and mary was very nice about going in and detailing every piece of equipment that she has in there and then she had a fanny pack and she said that she fills that up so that way she can just run to the field and somebody's injured she has what she needs um and it was nice to see all of that I also saw an MCL tear um, and a knee dislocation. So those were two in, um, instances when the players were taken out of the game. We had to wrap them up, ice them up, and then send them on their way with their parents to go to the hospital to get further treatment um, because there was nothing else that we could do and they needed to get off of the field because they were in no condition to continue playing football. I also saw a high ankle sprain, um, which this situation was scary for me because I almost got bulldozed by a football player, um, which, according to Mary, happens quite a bit um, with athletic training, especially in football games, because they're just at this such high momentum that they will come off and they will hit you if you are in the way. And in this situation, we were in the way and I almost got hit. Um, but this athlete ended up going back into the game because there was only like 10 seconds left and his team had the ball and he really wanted to play. So his coaches let him go back in and play. I also saw the use of Steri strips um, with a cheerleader accident. Um, somebody fell in the pyramid, chin, hit eyebrow, gushing blood. So we cleaned it up, put some Steri strips on it, um, and I got to see how those were applied and used. And then I also saw um, after the game just different techniques um, to check if there was a rotator cuff injury and stretching techniques, um, especially for the legs um, and the quads that were very sore um we saw different stretching techniques to kind of help combat that for the physical therapy i saw four different patients that all had four different types of injuries so the first patient i saw had just recently had a heart and kidney transplant and because of that they had a, a femoral nerve palsy um so they could not feel or move their left leg so I saw different stretches and exercises to help, one, move the leg again and get movement back in there, and two, just to get the feeling back in there because he can't feel anything with it. So we saw different techniques and stretches to help combat that. And then I also saw a person with cerebral palsy. So we did um, some nerve um, exciting 
exercises um, which was hooked up to a machine to kind of excite those nerves and the legs and stimulate them and get them doing what they need to be doing and then also we did some standing exercises and she was standing during that um her chair is one of those very expensive and high-tech ones where it is able to stand up um to help ease off the diaphragm ease off the lungs ease off the stomach and just get some standing in and then we also did just some different chest and arm exercises um to keep all mobility moving um and it was just something they were continuing on they were in like this 12-week program and so they were just adding on to that. Um, the third patient that we saw was somebody who had a spinal cord injury due to a car accident. So they were temporarily paralyzed from the neck down. Um, so we just did different mobility exercises in the arms and the legs um, and then rotation of the neck just to get that normal feeling back. And this was the second time that Michelle had been working with this patient. Um, so everything that she was doing was new. Um, and it was new, not only just for me because I'm observing, but also just for Michelle because, as I said, this was the second time with that patient. So she was explaining everything more in depth with this patient. And then the final patient we saw was just somebody who had chronic back pain. So this is more typical physical therapy. Um, and it, we just did exercises to help with that back pain, to help alleviate it, um, to help walk normally and everything. And both Mary and Michelle were good about explaining to me what they were doing while they were doing it and why it was important that we needed to do that for athletic training the part that i liked the most was being with the action there was never a dull moment during my observation hours something was always going on and if it wasn't we were watching the game to be prepared if something did so i didn't even have a time to think of oh I could be doing this assignment for this class or, oh, I like my thoughts never wandered. I was so focused in on the game and the tasks at hand and I loved that. And for physical therapy, I liked that there were different types of injuries and it wasn't only joint or bone pain, which is how the physical therapy that I had and the type of like physical therapy that just comes to mind first for me. Because of this, there were a lot of different exercises and techniques that were used and I just liked that it wasn't all the same and like mechanical. It seemed very organic and natural. Um, the part that I disliked the most about um, this, um, athletic training was the smell of the athletes. I did not take into account that when athletes play, they tend to smell. It's just a natural thing. And I just didn't take it into account when I decided and fell in love with athletic training. I also disliked the weather portion which I, is another thing that's out of my control that I just didn't think of with football it can snow during a game it can be 90 degrees just because that's the way the season runs and so I didn't take into account that that's something that I'm gonna have to withstand and be prepared for and just work through it just like the players are for physical therapy I disliked the most how slow it was yes I saw many different things and many different patients and injuries, but I only saw four patients. I was with patients for an hour at a time, which is needed for their injuries, but I fear that if I continue to do this every day, I could grow bored of it, and I don't want that to happen, and I just don't want it to have to become like a routine that I'm, that I feel forced, and I don't want to do anymore, and I'm afraid that could happen um, with continuing with only physical therapy however I am um, most interested in athletic training because it is different every time you never know what's going to happen in a game and you're the first person there you assess them first um, I like the emergency med part of that and that you can be there to help them first and it's just fast paced and I'm so engrossed in it the whole time and I love that um, so because of that, I do believe that the kinesiology field is the correct path for me just because I, I love athletic training and I do like physical therapy and there is a world where I can do both and be okay with that. I don't have many questions, um, for physical therapy. I just had a question of what your typical hours looked like. If you worked at a high school, uh, do you work during the day? Um, do you only go for um, practices or games? Just like little logistic things like that. And then for physical therapy, I had a question about specialties. 
um, if you could choose a specialty in something, and if you did, what the next steps for that would be. Is it um, you have to take more certifications, you have to take another exam, if there's a different pay increase, if you have to go back for school. Um, so just different certain logistic questions with that.